So there's been a, a lot of discussion about extremism. We know that there's a lot of um, anxiety in Parliament about security. But but what's the actual evidence here? What is the state of extremism and where these threats are, are coming from? Well, joining us now is Tom Wilson. Tom's the policy director of the Counter Extremism Group, which is a think tank focused on providing some practical solutions to the growth of extremist ideologies. Uh, Tom, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, thank you for having me. So look... We know that the security levels are very high at the moment. There's increased tensions, obviously, since this conflict um, in Gaza has in, has intensified. But with the work you're doing, where where are the threats coming from right now? Well, I think that uh, the kind of threats that meant that MPs were fearing for their safety if they didn't have an opportunity to vote in a particular way in Parliament, that particular threat... Um, appears to primarily be coming from Islamist elements as well as I think also from the far left. And I think it was just a sort of interesting coincidence that this week on Friday there was an individual actually convicted for far left anarchist terrorism um, and he had expressed a wish to murder MPs. I also think that the people who uh, were responsible for the fire bombing of Mike Freer's uh, constituency um, that means that he says he will no longer be standing as an MP. I think those people weren't Islamists. They, they may have been connected with the far left. So um, this most recent threat seems to be coming from those two ideologies primarily. Um, Tom, would you just explain to us as well, what exactly does Islamist mean? Well, the term is quite contested and there isn't one agreed upon definition. But essentially what you're talking about is a politicised an extreme interpretation of of Islam. Um, I think, you know, it's important to say not a mainstream view of Islam, not the majority view on Islam. Um, and within Islamism, there's so many different spectrum, you know, there's a wide spectrum. So you've got jihadist elements, but you've also got nonviolent uh, elements that wish to even use the democratic process to, to shape and influence policy that would be closer to groups like the Muslim Brotherhood. Okay, and so you've you've spelt out the the threats from um, Islamist um, sort of extremism and far left extremism, mm. and ha is the I mean it's quite a basic question, but has this all intensified since the seventh of October? Well, I think what the seventh of October has done is it's revealed what was always really there and what has been um, a growing problem <clears throat> for quite some time now. Obviously, when people could actually see it so visibly on their streets, some of the sorts of placards and chants that were seen, as well as sort of uh, people feeling emboldened to post things online they perhaps weren't doing till more recently. I, I think it just became very apparent what's there. But but it doesn't have to just be foreign policy that brings attention to these things. We saw with some of the debates around schools, for instance, particularly around uh, blasphemy, uh, has also been an opportunity where Islamist groups have attempted to um, rally support for themselves. And, and what about um, extremism on the other side, on the mm. on the far right? Because that's been a, a feature of life and, and politics for a while. Joe Cox, the, the murder of Joe yeah. Cox, there was Rosie Cooper, there was a, right. a, a, a plot that was foiled, which was involving far right. Just talk to us a bit about the threat levels from that side of things. Um, I think that the far right is a primarily quite a reactionary uh, movement. Um, it responds and attempts to exploit what's going on uh, more broadly. We saw that in um, the summer of 2020 uh, after some of the Black Lives Matter demonstrations, how the far right came out as a, a, this sort of save our statues movement. Um, and again, much like Islamists, you've got quite a broad spectrum from sort of the street movements, sort of these more thuggish elements that don't have a particularly clear or coherent ideology compared to groups like National Action and, and white supremacist terrorist groups, which is where the, the threats that you saw to people like Rosie Cooper um, and Luciana Berger uh, were coming from. Um, and, I, you know, I think it is significant that in, in recent years we've had two MPs murdered. One was murdered by an Islamist terrorist and the other by somebody on the far right. So the threat that our democracy is facing is, is coming from a, a range of ideologies. Um, but all of the stats that we have in terms of um, arrests and live plots that are being monitored, as well as if you look at how many people have been killed in different types of terrorist attacks, suggest that uh, Islamist terrorism 
is the predominant threat in the UK at the moment. And so when um, politicians talk about that, are, are they right to, 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 you know, in terms of the language they use around um, Islamists? I mean, we heard uh, Lee Anderson say that he thought that the mayor of London was being controlled by Islamists. Um, we've had a number of high profile politicians, including Suella Braverman and, and others. Are they then, is that right for them to, to use that language or is there better language to use than that? I think it's important that if we've got to a position where um, what's going on in Parliament is being shaped by intimidation that is linked to Islamism, that politicians give a lot of time and attention to talking about that and, and call that out very strongly, but also present some clear policies about what they, they, they want to do in response to that. I think what's unfortunate um, is, is that it becomes... Um, the subject becomes trivialised. There's something quite infantile about the way in which the rhetoric from some individuals um, changes the conversation so that instead of talking about the threat, we're instead talking about what language different politicians have used or, you know, what is Liz Truss doing at some conference in America? Did she call out Tommy Robinson or not? That that, that becomes the topic of conversation. And it feels as though we're not going to be able to address the situation where MPs, you know, three MPs now have to have bodyguards off the back of this because instead we're talking about language by certain politicians, and that seems like an unfortunate distraction to me. Mm. Well, look, really good to speak with you. Thanks for your time. That's Tom Wilson from the Counter Extremism Group, which is a think tank which focuses on uh, looking at how to stop extremist ideology.